What is going everybody? It's Micro Reversal Productions. Yes. New intro. And we are here to discuss Android 12, the stable release that finally released for the Galaxy Z Flip 3 in all its glory, as well as later in another video, the Android 12 stable release for the Galaxy Tab S7 series. Yes, it dropped on the same day as it did for, at least for me anyway, for my Galaxy Z Flip 3. Now, right before we get into everything, I've been running the beta release, as you guys, as, as some of you guys know on the channel. I've been running the beta release since November 1st, November 2nd-ish, and it took them a little extra time to, 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 to release the stable version for us. And it seems like that may have been why, because they wanted to release it at the same time for the Galaxy Tab S7, S7 Plus for me. And I think I know why. I think it's because Samsung, if you guys have been paying attention to Samsung software, it's becoming more and more simple and unified across all of their devices, much like how a certain other ecosystem, iOS, <laughs> runs their stuff. A lot of their, their software are very similar between their devices. Uh, smartphones or tablets and it's good to see that with Samsung and so being able to get a 2.7 gig update on the tablet was nice at the same time as getting uh, like a 300 megabyte ish update for us running the beta software which in reality I think it was about 2.5 to 2.7 gigs if you weren't so good to hear or see that Samsung is actually getting better and faster at pushing out their updates let me know down in the comment section below if you guys have received Android 12 yet on your device, whether it's a Samsung or another device, and some of your favorite features. And before we get into the features that have been highlighted with Android 12 One UI 4, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that way you never miss my videos. That way you can sit back, chillax, and see what's cracking. Now, let's get into the video. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is settings, specifically privacy controls. Privacy is a big thing with Android 12. Android 12 allows you to control your apps and what apps have control to your cameras, your microphones, and your location. This also affects your ad services. This affects your autofill settings. It, it, it affects the access to your phone. You get to be choose how private you need to be or in what circ circumstances you allow apps or specific aspects of the phone to access those three core features of your phone, your life. So privacy control right within the settings allows you to control that. Now outside of that, we have a couple features that we see that the, the Z Flip 3 could definitely take advantage of, but in general, the first feature is gonna be in quick settings, which is extra dim. In your quick settings, if you scroll down, you scroll over, it should auto populate itself, but you'll see a feature called extra dim. So if you need a little extra brightness toned down on your display, you can hit extra dim and it'll lower itself even more. Now that feature can still be used, even if you have your brightness high, it will just tone it down a little bit. But I see most people, including myself, using the feature when my brightness is already really low or at nighttime going to sleep using that extra dim feature allows the brightness to calm down so I don't have to worry about the brightness affecting my eyes like that. The other feature I will say, especially with the Z Flip 3 and the Z Fold 3 or foldables is within YouTube. In settings, when, you, when you're watching a video, if you click on the, the, the options button right there while you're watching the video, you'll see controls. When you click on controls, it'll pull up where the description box usually is and you'll see your ability to you know, control the video, play, pause, skip, you know, all that fun stuff. Well, with the flip and fold series, that actually can take up the second, you know, the bottom half of the display. So while you have it flexed and watching, you have your controls right there to control things. And I find that very, very useful. Prior to Android 12, basically like Android 11 and when flex mode was first introduced, and within good lock, if you want to use more flex mode like settings, in YouTube it automatically populated those kind of controls. Now it's much more sophisticated, a little more advanced where it's not automatic, and now you can just go into YouTube specifically and pull that up. 
Alternatively, you can also choose specific apps like a YouTube or something else to actually display your controls at the bottom of the screen. But for YouTube specifically, they have those features there. The other feature with YouTube is the advanced or improved picture in picture. Now, while you're on your, like if you watching a video, you swipe home and the video populates at the bottom of the screen, so you can still watch it while doing other activities, you can resize that screen. So now that screen, you can just expand or shrink depending on how big or small you want that to be. And it'll suck up as much space as it can within that section of the phone. I find that to be really nice because sometimes if you don't want to be in a YouTube app, you just want to have a nice big screen there and you want to kind of do your own split screen with YouTube, you can do that by changing the size of your picture in picture display. I really like that feature from uh, that, that YouTube Google has added into Android 12. Another feature we're going to talk about is the other aspect of Android 12, which is theming. Now, when you set up a wallpaper, you're asked to choose from different automatically themed colored palettes for that wallpaper to add to your aesthetic, your phone aesthetic. It affects your phone, your calendar, a lot of different Samsung apps, I believe even Gmail. It allows your theme of the, 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 the primary colors, if you will, of your wallpaper to stand out amongst your, 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 your other apps and ways of using your phone, which also includes your notification panel. So play around with that and see what you would like about that. You can also skip it if you wanted to. If you wanted to keep what you had going on, you can also do that as well. I haven't necessarily noticed too much how it affects with like good lock and your ability to change your, your notification panel already. So it is kind of interesting to, to see how they play along. But just in terms of out, right out the box, you can affect your themes. And I'm glad that it's not buggy anymore because I know in the very beginning of Android 12, it was. The theming is another big aspect of Android 12, theming and privacy. Now, some of the more nuanced things that you'll see fixed or improved upon is widgets. Widgets look much better now. Widgets also much more round, uh, rounded, like, you know, a squircle, if you will, or, uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> a square circle, much more refined edges to widgets and they look a little bit better. Google Photos has a neat little, uh, you know, different cutouts for their images that you want to have on, on display for you as well. Samsung also released another calendar widget that I currently am using on my home screen that actually gives you an effective calendar with like stuff specific to the day that is going on. I usually switch between that and the other calendar widget, which just displays your day and, and the events. But it's nice to see that they added that. The one thing I don't like is both with the phone and tablet, you can't resize that specific widget. So I don't know if it, they, it, it if it breaks, if it was breaking, and they had to just just keep it as a as a, a stagnant, you know, widget, a, a fixed widget, if you will, but you cannot resize the new calendar widget. So I, I do find that a little funny, but yes, widgets have been improved from that perspective. Another key feature is within uh, your pop-up screen. So when you pop up an app, if you actually click on the little blue slider at the top where you can drag and move around the free floating app, if you click on it, you can actually pin it, pin the controls now. Shout out to, uh, uh, what's the name, Saki Tech for finding that one you can actually pin the controls of the pop-up screen or pop-up view right there. And so either you can have the little blue, you know, slider or the controls displayed much like a Windows app, if you will. I like that, I like that a lot. And then the last thing to note with Android 12 that I've been able to notice is just like additional emojis and stickers and, and AR type stuff, I believe AR, if not just, you know, animated. Uh, stickers and whatnot within the keyboard. Those are the features of Android 12 that we've gotten to see, gotten experience, and now that we get to use, along with various other bug fixes and improvements and just overall quality of life of improvements with Android 12 on the Galaxy Z Flip 3. And much of those features are similar with the tablet, which is nice. And one of the things that we've already kind of seen baked into Android 12 <laughs> preview for the Galaxy Tab S7, uh, S7 Plus in my case is Android 12 L 
which is for like larger screens, has already kind of been adopted by Samsung since before Android 12. And, it, and I believe I noticed it a little bit more with Android 12 now running uh, a certain uh, aspect of being able to utilize a large screen just within settings alone seems like it has been improved with Android 12. So be on the lookout for that video, which is probably coming right after this one. But that is the Z Flip 3, Android 12, One UI 4. Again, let me know down in the comment section below your favorite features. If you've gotten it yet, do you like it? Are you looking forward to Android 13? Let me know down in the comment section below. But again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that way you never miss my videos. So that way you can sit back, just like, see what's cracking. But your man Micah is signing out. And until the next video, wait for it.